When I evaluate someone being nominated for an important role, rather that's in healthcare, education, or government, I always start with one question. What have they done and what do they believe in? Because for me, it's not about politics. It's about policy. It's about actions. It's about whether their ideas move us closer to a healthier future or keep us stuck in the same broken model. So today, I want to talk about their recent nominee for U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Casey Means. You may have already heard her name, especially if you're part of the metabolic health community. She's a Stanford-trained physician, the co-founder of Levels, and the author of the book Good Energy. And while some are quick to jump into a political debate about her nomination, I'd like to take a different approach. Let's talk about the why behind her work. Let's look at the policy she supports. And then you get to decide what kind of public health leadership you actually need. Now, before I continue, if you're finding value in this kind of deeper dive into healthcare policy and metabolic health, take a second to like this video and subscribe. It helps us reach more people who are ready to think differently. Let's start by acknowledging the problem. Our health system is struggling, not because we don't have brilliant doctors or dedicated nurses, but because we've built a system designed to manage disease, not prevent it. Most surgeon generals have operated inside that system, often reading from a familiar script. Diagnose, medicate, repeat. But if we had a public health leader who asked better questions, who focused not just on what's the diagnosis, but what's the root cause, that's the conversation Dr. Means wants to have. And from what I've seen, her ideas aren't just different, they're aligned with the mission of the metabolicrevolution.org and the American Diabetes Society.org, where I proudly serve as a board member for both. Organizations committed to transforming public health by focusing on metabolic root causes, food quality, and lifestyle interventions that actually work. So what does Dr. Means believe? What are her policies? Let's take a look. First, she wants to bring real food back into our schools. That means meals cooked from scratch, free from ultra-processed ingredients and synthetic dyes. This isn't just idealism. It's a practical step towards addressing childhood obesity, attention issues, and the early onset of insulin resistance. She believes that the food we serve our children should nourish them, not make them sick. Second, she's proposed adding warning labels to ultra-processed foods, just like we do with cigarettes or alcohol. She wants wants to give consumers the full story so they can make informed decisions. Not be misled by packaging that says heart healthy while quietly spiking blood sugar and inflammation. Third, she supports banning harmful food dyes and additives, many of which are already banned in Europe. These chemicals have been linked to behavioral issues, allergies, and metabolic disruption. And yet they're still found in countless products on American shelves. Fourth, she's calling for a stop to direct to consumer pharmaceutical advertising. That means no more ads selling your pill before you've even talked to a doctor. It's a move towards putting the power of healthcare decisions back in the hands of patients and physicians, not marketing departments. She's also concerned about industry influence among drug and food regulators. In her view, regulators should be working for the people, not for profit. And I agree. When the same companies making our food are influencing the guidelines for that food, we have a conflict of interest that compromises public trust. Another major area where she wants to make changes in agriculture. She supports a shift away from factory farming and toward regenerative agriculture. Farming methods that prioritize soil health, reduce chemical use, and create more nutrient-dense food. It's a move that's good for our planet and for our mitochondria. In the realm of mental health, she's advocated for more research into innovative therapies, including guided psilocybin-assisted therapy, as part of a broader strategy to address the growing mental health crisis. Again, it's about exploring root cause solutions, not just symptom suppression. But what ties all this together is her unwavering belief 
and the importance of metabolic health. She speaks the same language as many of us have been speaking for years, which is that insulin resistance is at the heart of most chronic disease. And if we don't fix that, we're just putting out fires while the house continues to burn. Now, some critics have tried to discredit her based on her business ties, especially her work with levels and continuous glucose monitors. But let me offer a different perspective. I've seen firsthand in my clinic how Tools like CGMs empower patients to understand their own bodies. They show you the effects of what you eat in real time. They promote awareness. And when awareness grows, so does accountability. To me, that's not a problem. That's progress. What I appreciate the most is that Dr. Means isn't pretending to be perfect. She left the comfort of the operating room to walk a more uncertain path. A path that puts purpose over prestige. A path that says we can do better and we must. Look, maybe you agree with her. Maybe you don't, but that's okay. The goal isn't to tell you who to support. The goal is to shine a light on the kind of policies that can truly transform public health and then let you decide if the people proposing them are worth your attention. Because if we want a future where food is seen as medicine, where metabolic health is the foundation, not an afterthought, where public health policy actually reflects science and common sense, then we need to at least consider voices like hers. And if you want to learn more about the kind of work I do and the broader community working to drive this change, including the mission of the metabolicrevolution.org and the americandiabetessociety.org, check out some of the links in the video description. If you made it to this part of the video, I wanna thank you for watching. Please stay curious, stay rooted, and never stop asking, what's the root cause? I can't wait to see you in the next video.